All right, in this example, we are going to demonstrate the internal thread and we will also demonstrate how to use the, uh, how to use the counterboard hole to create a faster stuff, to create a faster holes and more robust models. In this model, we will use like, let's say the steel 1023 or plain carbon steel, maybe just, and we are going to use, and we are going to model the left rod model. And how we will start this, we will start the sketch on a front plane. We are going first to make a center line. And I will make this center line much longer than the model, because I will need to be able to choose it. I will make it maybe a 10 inch. And then I'm going to make a rectangle, which will be anchored at the coordinate origin and stretch to somewhere. And I will specify, as per dimension, the overall length of this rectangle to be 6 plus 13 sixteenths. 6 plus 13 divided by 16. And I'm going to specify the diameter. And let's see, what is the diameter? 0.867. So it is 0.867 outside diameter. So I'm going to choose the top line and choose the diameter. Choose the axis and pull mouse down and I'm going to specify that this diameter is at 0.867. Now you see why in the drawings it's shown as a broken view because it is going to be a very thin piece. That's all what I'm going to place into my base sketch and I'm going to revolve this as a revolve base and it is automatically selected as the only viable option. Now, I'm going to make the hole on the left and I'm going to specify custom counterboard hole. And that counterboard hole I'm going to specify through the hole wizard. So I will use the hole wizard. And I'm going to choose the generic hole here, legacy hole. As a type, I will call the count C board hole. Diameter of the hole is going to be 0.648. Depth of the hole will be a 4 and 3 quarter, 4.75. Counterboard diameter is going to be 0.742. And counterboard diameter and counterboard depth is going to be a one inch. And now I'm going to click on a position tab. I'm going to click on the left cylindrical surface. I'm going to anchor that call to the coordinate origin and close the close the hole wizard and here is actually my hole my counterboard hole as per specification i can finish with this side by making those small quarter holes which are tangential and for this hole to make i will need to make a plane as a reference geometry which will be parallel with my top plane and which will be tangential to the surface so Going to insert reference geometry, plane. Going as a first reference to choose my top plane. As a second reference, I will choose the cylindrical surface. And I'm going to specify that those two are parallel. And I can choose either top or bottom by choosing the directions. So if I click on flip box offset, it can be either top or bottom, doesn't matter. I will use the top. And click OK. Now, when I place that whole wizard, I will place the hole on the plane, not on the surface itself. Otherwise, it will never be aligned. So, those side holes are one quarter inch and they are 716 centrally positioned from this edge. So, to do this, I'm going to a hole wizard. And let's see if we have 716 hole as a standard hole. 
If not, 732, 716, here it is. And now I'm going to place on the, instead of the blind, I'm going to place that this is a true all. I'm going to click on a position tab and not click on the surface itself. I will click on a plane. Okay, I will click somewhere on the plane one where the plane intersect the surface. Yep, at positions. And I will click on the plane one. I'm going to look straight to it. I'm going now to click escape to stop placing additional hole. Click left mouse button on the center of the hole that I just placed. Press shift and choose another entity, which will be my coordinate origin. And I will choose a relationship that those two are horizontal, that they are aligned in a horizontal way. What will center my hole? Click close and place the dimension. And the dimension will be a distance from the end and according to this drawing, the center of the hole is 716 from the end. And here is my distal left end down. Okay. And look how economical it is. Only that I make a drawing was the one was the one rectangle so far. The only other drawing that I will need to make to make this fairly complex part will be another rectangle to cut the groove because I do not have here the groove command and stuff. So anyway, now how I'm going to make, let's now finish this part here. So let's make the groove. To make that groove, I'm going to sketch on the front plane. I'm going to make a rectangle which is going to be coincidental with the projection of the edge. I'm just stretch it arbitrarily. I'm going to place a center line from the coordinate origin, horizontal. And now I'm going to place the dimensions of my groove. The groove is offset for 3 sixteenths of the inches from the right edge. The groove diameter, the inner groove diameter, I will click on a groove and click on the axis and click down, is going to be at the inner diameter. The D2 is 0.75. Is a 0.75. And the thickness, the last dimension to specify the groove will be the will be its thickness. And the thickness of the pattern, it's the opposite direction. And the thickness of the groove is 0 0.095. And I should also increase my tolerances to a three decimal point. So decimal here, length to a three. And close the sketch. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to revolve. So feature revolve cut. And there is only one option in this configuration that have created the groove. Okay, so my axles is being formed. Now, the last operation is I will use the whole wizard. And first I'm going to specify that thread in a whole wizard, which will create an annotation. And then as an option, I'm going to actually create a physical thread by using the top, by using the thread option. So I will go to a whole wizard. I'm going to choose that this is the that this is the seven eight will be a nine sixteen and then the top drill is a one half okay so i will choose the one half here I'm going to choose the one half seven sixteen so i will use the one half size of the hole and i'm going to use the end condition tool i'm going to use the straight top hole so i click on a straight top and this is the hole and the whole size is going to be 916 18 
and the length of the hole. Let's see, thread. The end condition will be a blind. The total length of the hole is going to be a 1 plus 5 divided by 16. And the thread length of the hole is going to be a 7, 8. 7 divided by 8. And I'm going to choose the cosmetic thread. So, the real diameter plus cosmetic thread. And I can choose the thread class will be NF3. Now I will click on a position tab. I'm going to click on the right circular surface. And I'm going to center that hole to make it coincidental with the origin and click OK. And that hole is made and as you can see, it is made just as an annotation. So the thread does not physically exist. The thread is just annotated. I can display the fake thread. So just the texture of the surface to have a visual effect of the thread. If I go to a tools, options, document properties, and then click on the left on detailing. So tools, options, document properties, detailing. And I can click to fill the button, which say to fill the box with shade, shaded cosmetic thread. Click OK. And look what has happened now. I'm displaying the thread. However, this does not exist as a geometry. This is just a fake. Okay, it's just a texture which helped me to identify how hey, this thread is all this thread. Now, if I really want to build that thread, 9, 16, 18, I'm going to use the thread option. And thread option, thread command, is positioned in a menu under the whole wizard. So I will click on the bottom arrow, left click on a thread, click OK for its warning. Thread location will be the edge, the outer edge of my hole. And uh, end selection, end location will be an blind and the length of that thread length of that thread is going to be a 7 divided by 8. Now it will be an inch top, it will be a cut thread and it will be a, it will be a cut thread and the size is going to be doesn't matter, it will be fixed here as long as it is an 18, so it will go to the uh, to the thread of whatever is 916, so and that's 5156. So you see that I cannot change the diameter, it's specified by the size of the hole, but I can change the pitch of the thread by changing different. That's not very obvious, by changing that's like 18. Okay, so what I choose was the 18 thread per inch. And let me see if I choose something extremely coarse, like five thread per inch, look what will happen. This is five. So, but the diameter does not change. Whatever I change here, it is specified based on the hole. So I will go back to my 18, my fine thread. And this will be a cut thread. And uh, it is correct. And I will click OK. And here is my full model. This will bring my full connecting rod, fully assembled. And if I use the plain carbon steel, fully constrained, tools, evaluate, mass properties, mass will be 0 0.56 pounds. So it will be correct dimensions. Now I'm going to save this as a right rod. And I'm going to make a drawing and I will try to make horizontal break, otherwise I, it will be very difficult to display details on a drawing. Okay, so to make a drawing, we go File, Make Drawing from Part, A Portrait, fine. I'm going to bring the front view. Now I can also 
here let's see break if i click a break it will make select drawing view to break okay selected view cannot be the detail view cropped view or empty view okay and look what i have now i just need to position my break line maybe from here to here and look what happened now my break is a match now my view is much more concise and actually I can change even the scale of it. Use custom scale, maybe a one to one. And if I change the details, okay. One of the things what happened with the, when we do the creation of the physical, of the physical thread is that it kind of messed up with the drawing. Okay, so it messed up with the drawings, so because you have now this entire thing here. Okay, so but here is my well, here is my view, and I can now pro proceed with annotating properly. So I can have the center lines. Yes, questions? So I was just going to say, because you did a tab pull in addition to adding a thread, it's kind of doubling up on the drawing. Uh, that's correct because if I did not have this it will just stay as a cosmetic it will just have a straight line so as you can see it just have this dashed line which annotates the yes so it will just have a dashed line but now it's kind of a it's just of this is the projection this is the projection of the of the sweep cut that was created so okay and now you can add all of your annotations there and yeah so let's see the whole call out for example we can call out the whole also here let's see and so on so we can add the dimensions look if i add the smart dimension from one end to another end doesn't matter that the view is broken it will give me the correct dimension with the sign that we have here a broken Okay, so now you can complete adding all of the annotations. Maybe add the nice cross-sectional view instead of this hidden line views. And this concludes this demonstration.